And John Silver would often begin his meditation instructions by saying, Yasaktavatam. It's a Thai idiom. Literally, it says, don't just do it. And if we were to translate it idiomatically, don't just go through the motions. It's easy enough to sit here with your eyes closed and tell yourself you're meditating, but there's a lot more that's involved. You can focus on the breath and not get very deep if you just go through the motions. Think about what the Buddha said. If you want the Dharma, there are two qualities you have to nurture. One is commitment, and the other is reflection. And in both cases, you want to not just go through the motions. In the case of the commitment, think of the terms that are used in the description of mindfulness, the basis of success, ardency, intent. There's another Thai idiom that goes with intent. Put your whole heart into it which is right in line with the English idiom. Give it your full attention. This is not one task that you do while you're multitasking other things. This is a monotask, because you're going to be observing your mind and the breath at the same time. And the more you can have your whole mind and whole heart right here at the whole breath, the more you're going to see. After all, everything the Buddha discovered in the course of his awakening is right here. Our problem is we don't see it. It's because our attention is scattered. So gather it together right here and put it into the practice. When John Lee says, to try the different types of breath. Ask yourself, how is it going? What does he mean? What, in my experience, corresponds to what he talks about when he says the breath going through the spine or the breath going through the legs, or taking the breath energy and letting it go through a pain? Really look into that, because there's a lot to be learned as you do that. You have to remember, we're here to gain insight by concentrating the mind. In other words, we're doing one thing that will lead to something else closely related. But the insights come only if you're paying careful attention. And this is where the reflection comes in. We're reflecting on our actions. Think of the Buddha's teachings to Rahula. Before you do something, why you're doing it, after it's done, reflect on what you're doing. Reflection here is not an abstract kind of reflection or an aimless reflection. A while back I heard someone say that he enjoyed the process reflection in his meditation because it gave rise to a sense of wonder. He would ask questions, he said they had no answers. But that's not the Buddha's type of reflection. The reflection is there to see, how am I doing? What can I do better? I was once at a Buddhist event, sitting next to a Zen teacher, and he was commenting to me, seeing that, of course, that I was a Theravada monk, and saying, I really liked reading the Pali Canon. It's full of koans, lots of questions for which there's no answer, like, what is the cause of suffering? Well, so happens there is an answer to that question, and that's the whole point of asking the question to begin with, to arrive at the answers. In this case, we're trying to arrive at an ultimate happiness, an ultimate well-being, sukha in Pali. And we want to reflect on how well we're doing. And this is where you have to realize there are gradations in levels of sukha. 
That's part of it. How intense is the pleasure that comes from this? How satisfying, how gratifying? And at the same time, how harmless is it? You don't simply go by the fact that you really intently like something, but you also have to reflect on the fact, does this harm anyone else? Does it harm me? Is there any harm in the action that I'm doing? Or is there any harm in the pleasure as I'm enjoying it? If you ask that question, you begin to see there are ways that you relate to pleasure that really are unskillful. The Buddha gives one example. The person who's practicing jhana and then exalts himself because he's got a higher jhana than his friends. Because that right there ruins it. You want to be circumspect. This is a word that John Lee uses when he translates that fourth base for success, Wei Meng Sa, which we sometimes translate as discrimination, but it can also be translated as ingenuity, your active mental faculties that go into the reflection. But John Lee's favorite translation is, be circumspect, look all around. Again, you give your whole heart to doing the practice, and you give your all-around vision to reflecting on it. And you find that you do come to higher and higher levels of well-being that are more and more secure, because they are more and more harmless. So you don't simply say, well, all feelings are stressful. Sounds like an insight, but you have to know when to use it. There was that case where a monk had said that to the Buddha. He'd given that answer to someone else, and he reported his answer to the Buddha. And the Buddha called him a worthless man. And another monk came to the first monk's defense. He said, well, after all, aren't all, all feeling stressful? As the monk had said, all karma leads to stress. All karma leads to feelings, therefore our, all karma must lead to stress because all feelings are stressful. And the Buddha said, when you're asked about karma, you talk about the three kinds of feeling. Pleasure, painful, neither pleasure nor painful. So as you're working, as you're committed to the practice, as you're doing it, you want to become more and more sensitive to levels of stress, levels of well-being. I mean, ultimately, yes, you will get to the point where you let go of all karma and you let go of all feelings. You let go of all reflections. But don't short-circuit <coughs> don't short circuit the practice by dragging in insights that are not really appropriate. You want insights that come from the fact that you are doing something and you see your mind in action as you're doing it, and you're reflecting on it in an appropriate way. So that the quality of the well-being is good, and the effect it has on you, the effect it has on other people, is as harmless as possible. When you reflect in that way, you further and further refine your commitment. And that's what's meant by not just going through the motions, not just doing it. You do it with your whole heart. You reflect with your whole mind. And any activity that's got your whole heart and your whole mind together is bound to lead to something good. <clears throat>